gonna be louder than that? So you're fading in now? Sweet. Thanks, Nick. Hey, that was uh, the band called Reburial. Reburialed. Reburial. Just Reburial. Right? Yeah. Uh, we don't know the name of the track yet. We might figure that out before the end, or maybe not. Um, and we're going to play another Reburial at the end, or the same one? We'll play another one. Yes. So, yeah, that's uh, some heavy stuff. Supposedly, Reburial is a Green Bay band or some sort of quasi-local kind of thing, right? I haven't heard anything, and I don't have any stuff to pimp. So if you are in Reburial, you need to contact us and give us something to tell your, your, your upcoming fans all about you. Yeah, the email I sent you is all the info I have. So It just said Reburial. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> they said there's three clips here. Enjoy. Nice, nice. So uh, every week or every episode, however often we're able to do this, uh, I want to feature some local music from uh, Green Bay area. So if you got stuff, Rhonda. And uh, so this is officially episode one. Last time was episode zero. Uh, it's like August now, and you should be hearing these pretty soon. And uh, so I have, uh, for episode one, I have my new BFF, Rhonda. And I'm going to grill her with some questions, but uh, I'm know, ready. First, bring it on. So, uh, so f- first of all, this isn't an official question, but I don't know how to say your last name. Oh, uh, Sitna Cow. Oh, so I did it. Sit I would have done it right. Sitna Cow. Everyone, okay. everybody murders my last name, and it's so easy. It's as it's spelled. Okay, that's yep. what that, I, I. I don't know if you told me that before, or if I just kind of thought. No, that, it's but, a real problem. Okay. I should just go by Rhonda, just Rhonda. So it's funny. So like, uh, um, I was. As I've had many on Broadway discussions over the last month, and uh, I mentioned that you're going to be on, and I'm like Rhonda, and they're like Rhonda, and I'm like, yeah, Rhonda, Rhonda, <laughs> you don't know Rhonda, That's, and then they're like, that might be Rhonda? a good thing. <laughs> I'm like, yes, Rhonda, Rhonda's going to be there, yeah, so it'll be cool. And they're like, really, yeah. So there was some surprise about that. Interesting. Yeah. So why do you think that is? Uh, well, I put think you on we, spot. I think we all know. Um, <laughs> Really? Well, of course. Who's um, we all? Well, it's probably they probably figure I'm somewhat. Uh, it's maybe a risk. I'm very outspoken. Really? Yes, but I think that's. I'm just. You guessing. have you have uh, uh, a varied vocabulary. I have a lot of vocabulary, and I'm <laughs> I'm ready to use it whenever I can. <laughs> but I think that it's possible. I'm not sure, but it's possible that they maybe wonder if I'm what I'm going to say, what we're going to talk about. That's um, what makes it awesome. I know. Shake your head, Nick. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I love that. I love when he does that. We have only had one episode. I feel like it, there's been a hundred already. How does that happen? It's fun. So I'm sorry. It's okay. So, so Gina and I are going to marriage counseling and we discuss how we both and probably our whole family probably like our parents and everything all the way back all the way back all the way back to the turtles right Mm -hmm. um we have a problem with talking over people so i'm sorry if i did that i have the same problem so this will be interesting yeah so yeah so can you can you like cut one of the mics if you need to nick sure just (laughs) i just cut myself there yeah (laughs) i can if you need me to just tell me what to do so I just want to explore that a little bit more. So uh, sure. I didn't mean to cut you off because I wanted you to keep talking. No, that's okay. Yeah. Um, that's my guess. I'm not really sure, but um, you know, I uh, thought I was a very uh, good and vocal voice for the Broadway District during the last year and a half. Um, during the you know what time? No, tell me what. <laughs> I don't really want to talk about it because I actually got that word out of my brain after about a year. Um, th- you know the whole store situation downtown yeah um, yeah but I think that there's always I think if people really know me I'm actually very mindful and thoughtful about what I say Um, I just don't usually hold back if I need to say something that needs to be said so I'm guessing there's probably people that aren't sure what I'm going to talk about with you Plus, like, uh, I don't know, I'm not, like, pointing any fingers, but, like, there are people in the media that might just clip out the controversial parts and play those. Right? Um, yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, because <laughs> that never happens. So I remember there was at least once, maybe more than once, where 
there would be Rhonda and then there would be Elliot. So that was weird. Like we were like we were opposing factions. We were, but I so. think that we I think it's all about intention. Right. And I think we both had good intention, which is exactly why we can sit here today. Right. Right. Even people who are on opposing views can get together and talk things out. I only that's, choose opposing view people to be in my life. I think that's a problem. Yeah, but, that's sort of a yeah. sickness. Yeah. That's right. weird. Yeah, it is. That's a taking bit. that what I just said, you just took that like ten times too far. All right. That's weird. All right. So so that actually kind of segues into the first kind of questions that I was gonna ask. And I, I kinda I asked Gina a lot of these questions very similarly. Okay. Um and because uh, this is a, I don't know. We'll see. You know, maybe a hundred episodes from now, this will all be different, and we'll have you back, and we'll do something completely different. And it'll good. be professional and awesome then. But so for right now, um, I want to I want to have my friends come in and like talk about like why they're here, why they care. Like so, in your case, like how long have you been in Green Bay? Is that a is that the that's first a, question? Yeah, that's sort of a first question. Uh, it's too short, then it'll be like uh, okay. one A. <laughs> I moved here in nineteen ninety. From where? Uh, from actually from North Dakota. Of all places, my parents came and took teaching positions, and I followed. Uh, my mom was terminally ill, and I didn't want to be away from her, so I moved to Green Bay. And I did leave for about two months, but I came back. Hmm. Yeah, I love it here. Yeah, what took you away? Uh, say weather. Well, it wasn't weather actually. <laughs> Even though. <laughs> I did go to Arizona. I went to Arizona, right? But um, I'm a fair-skinned maiden, and that was, that's not yeah, the place yeah. for me to be, really. True. Um, I don't know. I'm a little bit of a spree- free spirit. I just like to yeah. test the the waters sometimes, and nice. And it's a really horrific place to raise a child. So that's exactly what brought me back. Arizona is. It is. What part of Arizona? I was in Prescott, Arizona. Yeah. And it's actually a pretty nice retirement community. Um, you know, just. Typical Arizona, people are just kind of hanging out. Uh, cost of living is crazy, but the schools are horrendous. The child care is horrendous. Um, there was like one park. It was just, interesting. Yeah, wow. people don't realize that. Hmm. It's nice to visit, not a good place to live. Wow. Yeah, that 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 uh, describes almost everywhere to me. Yeah. Like uh, you know, that's why I'm still here. Yeah. No, so. I'm happy to be back. Um, it was probably a good thing to do because it gave me a sense of appreciation to come back and be in this area, and I don't regret it. Right, right. Um, cool. Well, you kind of slipped into this, but uh, mm-hmm. so what's your favorite thing about Green Bay? Oh, boy. Um, I would have to say it's changed since I've been here. You know, you grow older, it's different things matter, different things. Yeah. Um, you know, your, your vices are different. Um, the people are definitely what I love the most. I don't spend a lot of time home. I spend a lot of time out of my house, um, hanging out in my neighborhood, going downtown. Right. Yeah. I just love the community. The community is great. Um, so what changed? You said, I don't know, you said a lot of stuff there, sorry. So you said oh, it changed, okay. though. Well, it changes, so you know. So people is now. You love well, people, people is now. now. I mean, didn't like people before. Well, no. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, no, pe- people are definitely what I love about being in Green Bay, getting to know there's a very diverse, I have a very diverse group of friends, um, all different walks of life, um, everything, and I love it that way. And yeah. yet I can get together with all these people. Right in various parts of the city and have a great time and yeah. Right. Even, uh, in, uh, little Tijuana. Oh boy. Mm, are we going to go there? I'll go there. No, okay, wait, I don't care. This, okay. is, this is, it's your show. Um, you can do whatever you want. My show. <laughs> you only get one episode though. So you got to get it all okay. out. Or maybe, you know, I don't know. Is this the only portion I get to talk about Green Bay? Uh, I'm gonna, I need to. You know what? It's, do uh, some more. Of what that. part about your show did you not understand? Yeah. Okay, no, yeah. you can talk about whatever you want. Okay. So I just have like uh, whatever, more or less like ten questions ish mm-hmm. to just kind of you know guide things. But I'd rather hear like what you want to say. So if there's more you want to say about Green Bay, so like the next thing I, I just have uh, um, the thing you're most proud of or a fun story of your life before you came to Green Bay. 
Oh, I have a great story about that. So you can do that now. And then when we'll I was back. in third grade, my mother, um, she was, she was beyond a free spirit, and she decided one day, we're going to take our family. We're going to move to France. Wow. Yeah. So we each had four. From North piece. Dakota. Uh, yes. Wow. Well, actually, at the time, no, that's not true. Oh. At the time, we went to, uh, we were in Michigan at that time, and then we oh. went. Yeah, Nobody but, stays in Michigan, it's just a for long, the record. Yeah, I have a <laughs> long story of where I've lived. And, but we'll talk Let's about go. this part. Okay. This part. Yeah. And you're talking over me again. Sorry. I just wanted to say. Sorry. Okay. Nick probably already cut my mic. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the ball. I dropped the ball there. Michigan. Okay, so story. I'm in France. No, my story, my fun, my fun story is that we were in France, and my parents were going to study there, and we were just going to go to school. You know, just in third grade, you're just going to go to school and learn in to France. speak in France, right? Of course, I don't have any say in this because I'm in third grade. So we go. Right. And so you went. You were there. Oh, hello. Yeah, of course. We moved. Angers, A N G E R S, France, and we. But on that's amazing, right? In wow. route, I had no idea. In route, oh, you have no idea. Wow. In route, we spent the night in the Charles de Gaulle um, airport on the floor. Um, Wonderful. In sleeping bags <laughs> because we had arrived and it was too early to actually get our. We hadn't exchanged our money and blah blah blah. So, in the meantime, there were gypsies running around, and my. <laughs> My this is like a weird movie. It is. It's like an art house movie. <laughs> My parents were taking turns um, guarding us and the the 18 pieces of luggage that we had. That's a really great memory. Wow. Yeah. I feel like, you know, that can, if I can get through that, I can get through anything. So how long did you stay there? We were there, oh, we were there um, not that long because it didn't turn out to be what it should have been or what my mom thought it would have been right so we ended up coming back it's just it wasn't realistic but my mom never really did anything that was it was just hey this sounds good let's do it that's cool though it is i know i loved her for that um we came back and then my mom and i went back um the summer after and she finished her class and then um and then i actually went by back by myself for a week awesome when i was older and i'm plugging france because it's a great so, country you to know, visit, so I'm uh, I'm 40-ish, and I've uh, I've never been to Europe. Oh so my. yeah, so like I feel kind of cheated, but I go. never had any good excuses to go. Um, Gina and I were going to go to Barcelona in September because of uh, you know I have to wrap everything around like business trip, and uh, it was just it was too expensive. Like we just couldn't. No, you need to do it. The, it you off. need to go, and you need to stay in a bed and breakfast where you share a bathroom. Yeah. And you, yeah, you're never in your hotel, so you don't have to spend money on a hotel. Oh, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there are cheap ways to do it. You can always hostel. Yeah. Yeah. Well, flights were super expensive when we had to decide, and then they, like, dropped by, like, 400 bucks, and then we already had decided not to go. So I'm Travel like, in March, painful. and you'll get the cheapest available ticket. See? Oh, see? I have my new travel agent. Yes. That's sweet. Um Okay, so uh, now back to Green Bay. You want to go back yeah. to Green Bay on this? Or you want to talk more about Europe? Um, no, not really. It's it was your just show. A, it was <laughs> it, it was just that was a memory. That's one of my favorite memories I have. That's super cool. I, yeah, not many people can say they were laying on the that. you know floor of a airport. I've laid on airport floors with gypsies before. running around. Not, not in France. Not with yeah. gypsies. Yeah. Not in third grade either. Yeah. Amazing story. Um. So, same kind of question, thing you're most proud of or a fun story in Green Bay? Is it an either or or is it and? A- and or. Okay. It's your show. Um, It's my show. <laughs> okay. The thing I'm most proud of, I would say, well, obviously, I think I'm, I try very hard to be a good mom. Um, it's the best thing in my life. So, I, that's, here, here. yeah. Nice. I'm, that's what I'm most proud of because I think that. Um, I haven't always had the greatest um, odds of that being an easy job for myself, but I have made it um, priority. Nice. And that, I would say, that's what I'm most proud of. Well, uh, according to your Facebook viewership, I think you're doing good. Thank you. Like, that's my most, like, that's where I see most of it. But yeah, I think it's good. So, I wasn't talking over you, though. No, was I? you weren't. Okay, good. No. You gave me that you're talking over me again, no. look. That's my that's my resting bitch face. It just happens. I can't help it. 
Wow. Yeah. That that just happens. Now, just so everybody remembers very clearly, I did not say that. Okay, it's the the RB RBF. We'll just say it with the initials RBF. So now we got we got to remember that neck, and we have to use that RBF going sure. forward. Yep. Just give me an. We RBF. all have it, even if you're not a woman. You have resting bitch. Oh, that is for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So um, there was an and that was an and right. So that's and. what you're most proud of. But, yes. So. Um, um, cause I'm a, uh, self-absorbed type of person and would never, never put my son or sons or grandchild first. Um, what else though? Like what other stuff? Like, what are you, like, what are you proud of for you? Um, um, I would have to say I am self-employed. I basically f- facilitate everything that I do and I get compensated for is basically done by myself. I market myself. I make sure that I, you know, I'm accountable. I show up for work. Um, I've been doing my profession. I'm a self-employed hair and makeup artist for 20 years and I had an agent for a while, but I have to say I have been more accomplished and have gotten way more work being representing, uh, representing myself more than just having an agent. I'm very proud of that. I work very hard to to never say no, to always show up, to not have to be babysat, to wow. um, put myself in situations that I'm not necessarily comfortable with working on purpose. Yeah. I take jobs sometimes that I'm not really, you know, it's not my thing, but I want to see how well I do. I worked for the Koch brothers this last week. That was an example. Wow. Did they pay you? Of course. Okay. All right. That's and cool. And I <laughs> hate saying that. Um well, they will pay me because I invoiced for the job. But, um, you know, I thought, why do I want to do this? Because they stand for everything I don't support and I don't have a lot of warm fuzzies for them. But then I thought, you know what? I'm going to be in a situation in an environment that is some place I've never been. I'm going to learn from it. I'm going to be able to um, be somewhat of a, you know, a sponge to take in some information, even though I signed probably five confidentiality agreements, which... I think is customary, but, um, no, usually one. Yeah. Or this is five, (laughs) but now we really, really mean it. You can't talk about this. No, we really, really, really think about it. (laughs) So that kind of sums up. I, I'm proud that I put myself in situations that aren't necessarily easy, but I know that they'll be worthwhile. Absolutely. Well, that's why you're here, right? Yeah. I was looking forward to this though. Okay. Good for Same here, that, by the way. Same yeah. here. Nice for you to pretend. Yeah. Not really comfortable, but it's worthwhile. But I'll do it. <laughs> you look very comfortable. <laughs> I'm a little cold. My air conditioner is a little, little you know, extreme right now. So I was like getting dressed today, and I'm, I'm like thinking, like, uh, you know, I have a face for radio, so I don't care what I look like, but like, uh, what am I going to be comfortable? in? And I'm like, I was really comfortable last time, and I don't remember what I was wearing. <laughs> Neither do I. I wasn't really looking. Oh, you were looking at me honest. a lot. <laughs> Next question. Okay, so uh, fun story. You have any fun stories? A fun story. Yeah. Ooh. Fun. <coughs> That's such a, you know, that word can mean a lot of things. Yeah. Fun story. Exciting, interesting, hilarious. Awkward. Awkward. Don't uh, say right now. Don't say right now. Okay, it's not right now. <laughs> um, I, a lot of my stories I, I probably have to do with my work because I spend a lot of time, obviously, working, as most of us do. Yeah. Um, do you remember John Edwards? He was a pres- presidential candidate. Oh, for candidate. sure. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, he was actually, um, he came to Green Bay in, in 2004. Sure. And he was running mate with John Kerry Mm -hmm. and they they came to speak at Bay Beach. And so he was coming to um, do an interview as well with Good Morning America. And so they needed a hair and makeup artist, so they hired me. Wow, sweet. Yeah, well. Oh. (laughs) Well, he is very perfect looking. Yeah, well. Is is that where this is going? Please say yes. Yeah, not really. Oh, that would have been awesome. Speaking of confidential agreements. So then we went, so I had to go on his bus to do 
his, you know, to get him ready for the interview. He's out of politics, right? So. Oh yeah, he's matter. beyond out of politics. Right, so right. it doesn't matter. You know, you can do whatever. The baby you want mama out. let that one out. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm on the bus and I have to sign papers, and then there's a woman who's video doing a video of the no. experience, and it was this blonde woman with little glasses, and they said, well, you don't mind if we get some you know, footage of you while you're working on him. I'm like, that's fine. I mean, what am I gonna say? I'm on this bus, and I'm, right. right. There's Secret Service people. That right. they, am I gonna right. say no? Right. No, I'm not gonna say <laughs> you're, you're, you're gonna leave then. Said, sure, where do I sign? So I did, and um, so she's videotaping this. His wife's there. His kids were younger at the time. Yeah. Um, wow. So there's like four, maybe six of us. That was it. And then, you know, we go forward to, you know, a few years later to find out that sure. here was this woman that was videotaping this right. and she was actually, you know. Right. Crazy. You know, his lover. And yeah. um, here she was. And then I put it together. I'm like, so that that's a story that I, I don't know if that's fun. It's and weird. It's, it's yeah. weird, fun, awkward, bizarre, yeah. all at the same time yeah. that I was actually in this moment where these people we're all together. Well, it was probably super fun at the time or stressful, stressful fun. It was I'm a little sure. bit of everything, but But like afterwards you're like, "Wow, oh what?" Oh my god, <laughs> that was her. <laughs> That's super crazy. It, wow. Yeah, it is. Wow. I have a lot of that. Um Okay. So, you know what I didn't uh the outline's kind of the same as last time. I, I got to I'll have to get better at that. I didn't know we'd be able to ho- do this on Monday right away. So, I, I was That's fine. That's sorry. fine. That's fine. I'm a, I'm a bad host. Um, but uh, this is where, like last time we broke in and you, you gave your, uh, you know, one oh. one on uh, on Camera Corner Studios. Well, I mean, I don't need to give the whole spiel, but, you know, the studio, you're here. Um, it's a product of Camera Corner and kind of do it yourself, video, audio, broadcast, uh, whatever you can imagine, you know. It's uh, available if you need it. Contact me. At uh, Camera Corner, that's rentals at cccp.com. Nice. So um, just in case I accidentally delete the first episode, episode zero, and we start with episode one, um, I just want to recap that uh, Nick kind of uh, spearheaded this whole thing where uh, Camera Corner Studios is like my sponsor for this, which is super awesome and cool. So uh, so thanks, Nick. And, uh, you know, thanks, Camera Corner Studios and Camera Corner and, you know, all of the uh, awesome people that are, uh, you know, involved in that. I don't know who else it is besides Nick to thank them, like, by name, but I'm sure there's other people. Pretty much to just thank. me. Well. I mean, I'll take the credit because really they're not I really listen. wanted you to be the one to say that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Just I mean, kidding. we may have some other people listening, but uh, uh, me. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, anything else you want to throw in there? You got availability any days? Sure. Like, um, I mean, I'm busy this Friday, but this Friday means a lot of different things to a lot of different oh. iPods. Oh, yeah, that's true. So, it's it's yeah. hard to give you booking information. No, the that's true. Thing. I guess I shouldn't have asked it like that. Oh, remember uh, I said that uh, you should uh, uh, maybe have a little uh, story or something about something that's booked coming up or oh, sure. Past, something like that. You have anybody like that? Uh, I have a very large insurance company from town that'll be coming in this Ooh, week. Confidentiality. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, three or four, or four or five. I bet there was only one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I haven't really signed anything. I just don't know if I can, you know, because they already do their own productions, but sure. it's just more convenient now to come here and, you know, the screen, the lights, they're, they're going to be using the chroma wall. So the, the green screen, the right. lights and the teleprompter set up so they can just walk in, drop their camera shoot and be done well we do have at least two very large insurance companies kind of here so yes could be either keeping one. a little bit of ambiguity yeah. there <laughs> yeah well, but yeah your show i mean you're the, my most frequent guest right now uh, oh well that's that's only two you can't add, you can't say that <laughs> come on why not but i've been here i've been here, i've been here at least one other time Tw- i think tw- two other times yeah you've yeah you've been here so it'll be good a few times yeah yeah are you saying I should? I've overstayed my welcome. No, no, not at all. You're you're always welcome. <laughs> so far, so far. I do wear out my welcome. It turns out. Well, you know, it's just weird. don't do like I did over at North Coast and bring in like confetti cannons and stuff. <laughs> that that can cause some problems, <laughs> right? So I at least need to be able to know about that before you start doing that kind of stuff, right? And it's not for video anyway. Why would you? 
Nice. Okay, so I got through like four ish questions, I think. Um, so, uh, Walmart. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. let's talk about that a little bit. Okay. Give me um, your thoughts on like what's happening, what happened. Um, the synopsis. How hard you wanted to punch me or anybody else? It's been a year. It has been. Um, no, I think I'm very <laughs> acutely aware of that. Yeah, I totally just talked over the top of you. Asked, okay. After asking you to talk, yeah. I just talked over the top I, of you. I do want to talk about it because I think um, I'm around a lot of people. I During the entire experience, there was a lot of, I had both good and bad feedback. Um, in a restaurant, sometimes people would come up and be like, yeah, good job. Or I have the opposite. You know, thanks a lot. Way to screw over, you know, Green Bay. Um but I feel the same as I do today as I did back then. Um, we could do better, and we did. And I'm really happy to be proud of that. Um, I think there was, as most things, there was something that was on the table. I think the media took it in certain ways and created a rift sometimes. Um, anytime you refer to people as opponents, right? That doesn't help. Um, I think that, you know, at the end of the day, it was a zoning amendment change, and that's what it was. <laughs> right. <laughs> and so it wasn't really about them in right. particular. And that was hard for me because I was part of a group, mm-hmm. be local, and right. rep, and I tried, you know, there were a few of us that tried to keep the conversation, you know, we can't talk about their crap wages, even though they pay like crap, but we can't talk about that. We have to talk about land use. Zoning amendment change, land use. That's what we had to focus on. It wasn't easy. It was an emotional situation. There was city politics involved. Um, but that's the way it goes, right? So, right. but at the end of the day, um, again, we knew we could do better. And we did. And I think a lot of us knew that was possible. Um, I still to this day cannot find a super center in the downtown of any city I can't. I've looked. I've researched. I mean, I will tell you, it was more than just being a, you know, a smart ass on Facebook and showing up at meetings. It was a full time job for me. And I took it seriously. And a lot of times I was put in front of a camera and had to answer to, you know, comments about, okay, you are in a sense sometimes the face of this fight. So you better have all of your ducks in a row so you know what you're talking about. And so I, I learned a lot. But one thing I, I will say about that experience, um, and I'm glad because we obviously didn't have the zoning amendment change and Walmart um, left. And we have a local developer that has now acquired that piece of land. Um, the most historic piece of land in Green Bay, by the way, uh, is actually the very first piece of land ever put on the historic register of Green Bay, which I'm not sure a lot of people know that. Um, so that's a great thing, but I I believe that the the turmoil, the you know the, the community involvement, even if it was you know people pitting against each other, it, it made a, a new energy resurface for people you know in their love of their city. It's like it re- created an energy that wasn't there prior to that, and I think that that was actually some sort of a gift. So thank you Walmart for that gift. But I think that that's something that. Um, that is that is definitely that's that's changed. If you asked people, you know, in this city two years ago, to be as invested in, you know, I I, I don't think it's an accident. You saw a lot of people really foc- refocus on what's important to them. Um, the people we, you know, I mean, you and I met, even Absolutely. though we weren't necessarily on the same side. I think there have been relationships that have been built. There are um, there are a lot of things that have come of that that were actually good. Of course, it's easy for me to say because, you know, my side won, I guess, in a sense. Yeah. But I think we all won. I don't. Th- I think everyone won, and I don't think it was a, a matter of, you know, this person lost. I mean, at the end of the day, again, Walmart decided they didn't want to be here. They could have been here. That's true. I was there. Right. If they would, if they would have said, sure, we'll make. Okay, it fine. Two stories. Right. I mean, it, it didn't. The smaller didn't even have to happen. If they would have said. 
Okay, fine. Two stories. And I was always, <laughs> and I was always okay with that as well. And so were most people that were showing up at you know these council meetings and speaking. And and so really, the media still tried to play it. I mean, because what do you do to sell news, right? You create a fight. You create sure. a problem. Yeah. It sells news. And so that's that was the fight. But at the end of the day, it was Walmart who decided sure. they did not want to be here. Sure, it wasn't the city of Green Bay. So they came. I think uh, I don't know two or three weeks later, one of the stations, and they wanted. I think they wanted to kind of stir more stuff up about that after. It was decided mm-hmm. after it was done and uh they interviewed me and they uh um i didn't want to get um caught with some weird sound bite so i recall saying over and over and over there is not going to be a walmart in the broadway district mm-hmm. <laughs> like over and over again that was my answer to every question <laughs> let me say it a little slower <laughs> yeah so um I want to hear more about what you would say about that. But one thing I think you probably don't know, because I don't go around telling everybody this, but um, it was probably um, three years, maybe longer, before I even stepped foot in the local Walmart that was out on the west side. Um, That has nothing to do with downtown or Walmart's uh, employment practices or anything like that. Um, I felt pretty strongly at the time that... Um, we needed to support our local discount retailer because they were paying for our downtown fireworks. Um, so I would always go to Shopco um, for that kind of stuff. And I think people do lose sight of that aspect of things. And uh, now that said, I feel like um, even Shopco themselves have kind of um, abandoned that market a little bit because they're getting beat by Walmart. Um, I don't think that's too controversial to say. Um, They're, you know, they're going after smaller markets. You know, they have Shopco hometown stores. I worked there for a while, so I know. Well, and online shopping is taking over. People wanting to walk around, you know, a three million square foot store. People don't want to do that. They don't have time to do that. They want to. It's convenience. They want to be able to just, hey, I want this right now. Right. Oh my God, I can just go online. I can buy this, and that's right. taken over, and that's put a huge dent even in Walmart's pocketbook. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So you know, like I don't have like a philosophical problem with, um, as long as they're following the law, um, with what what companies pay or anything like that. If they're doing something illegal or even like unethical, I feel like um, people will get the word out and those things will get fixed one way or the other, either through legal means or something else, right? Just public shaming, right? Public shaming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and Walmart has, they've committed to raising wages, you know, probably not enough. I don't think they could raise them enough really, but like, you know, those, those are, uh, they, I think they probably pay what Shopco pays though. So like, mm-hmm. so that kind of discussion is always weird, right? Yep. Um, but um, I don't think people know that about me, that uh, I really despised Walmart. I really hated everything about what they were doing. But uh, but then I read Sam Walton's book because much like you, I like to expose myself to the other side. And in his book, um, the reason that uh, I believe, and Sam's dead, so I mm-hmm. can't actually ask him, but um, I believe the reason that they took so long to actually get to Green Bay is because they were afraid of the competition. And I don't know that if that, that was just Shopco or who it was, but they said that they got their, uh, he said that he got their ideas for distribution from a company in Green Bay. That's right in his book in uh, uh, Made in the USA. Sam Walton kept me up one night because mm-hmm. I'm like, what is he talking about? I thought I, I you know, imagined it. Um, So anyway, so he avoided Green Bay for a long time. And, uh, you know, then they came in with a vengeance. So the whole thing is, you know, I kind of wish he was there. I would like to I would like to have talked to him about that, you know, because like, what's your actual take on that? Do you think there should be a downtown super center? His actual take on that was we will go nowhere where we're not wanted. That's a quote. I I think you're right about that. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah. Um, And his first stars were were small. So the whole thing's weird. Um, Yeah. Anything else on that? Uh, I would like to, can I make one more plug? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah or, it's your show. Or, um, <laughs> or request. Yeah. Um, during that process, we learned a lot about city politics and we were able to learn process of how things happen. Are you running for office? I'm not saying anything right <laughs> now. I'm just saying that, um, Wouldn't it be awesome if we had, uh, if we had breaking announcements? <laughs> Breaking news. Right? The, we got to come up with a little thing. <laughs> There'll be no news today. 
Um, but to that point, she implied that there would be news someday, and I did totally talk over the top of her because oh. that needed to be said. So there will be no news today. But what I'm saying, let me get back to this. So people need to understand that um, really, really important decisions get made from city government. Um, they have a lot of power and a lot of influence, and we have to understand that that is something that you know when you when you decide not to go out in a spring election, right? and not vote. That's a really, really poor choice. Because your local government, whether it be council or, or, you know, county board, they make really important decisions that do affect your life. Even if you don't believe they do, they do. They affect your well-being. They affect everything that, you know, your whole lifestyle about living in Green Bay. And I really hope, because of all the media attention, because of all of the, the conversation about you know, some of the aldermen and, and some of the things that are happening, and we know all about those things, mm-hmm. um, that it engages people to really get proactive and want to be, you know, participating in, in local government and, and city politics because it's, you know, it is an important job, and I think that it doesn't get the props that it deserves, and I think that people just assume they just, you know, you clean up your garbage cans and they make sure that you're... Your driveways are plowed. They do all of that, but they also make really important decisions like, do we bring a major retailer into the downtown historic district of Green Bay? They they got to choose, you know, they got to make that choice. And that is something that I would hope there are people out there who want to be involved in making those decisions. And so I really hope that in spring of 2016 that we see a resurgence of energy and people wanting to be involved in in that process. So um, I was trying not to talk over the top. It's okay, you. thank you. So I would, but I was nodding that whole time. I so, know. Yeah. You are. Um, um, so do you think that people like you and me and you know our 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 clan of regulars, right? I don't know what, how you want to, uh, you know, the politically active people, right? Mm-hmm. Um, the, the conscious people. <clears throat> well, right, that, mm-hmm. and that's that's where I'm kind of going with that. Like, so do you think that that is? Um, something that can be um like do you think that was enough what do you, do you mean? think the controversy last year was enough to to get people you know motivated for an election two years later um i absolutely i think there's a lot of uh workings happening i know there are things happening um under the surface conversation happening um a lot of there were a lot of people that came out and of the community that we didn't know were there that were well-spoken, that were well-versed, that did research, that, you know, actually have, you know, ties to the city in different ways that we didn't realize. Um, And you're keeping them active somehow? Yeah. Okay. Trying to. um, I think part of it is, it's more, I mean, you do, you have to keep them active. You have to keep them, they have to know what's on the line. You have to... You know, there's a whole system involved in that. So I, I sort of, um, you know, people people like that, those people. Um, so I, th- I feel like they become those one issue voters, right? Like, you know, like the anti-abortion people, right? So like that, I, I can't I can't stand people like that, uh, that are like single issue voters like that. And so I get afraid of some of those people sometimes being active. Like if that's the only thing that you're thinking about, you are blind to all these other things. And so, like you said before, these are the people that we vote for that collect the garbage, make sure we have, Mm -hmm. you know, adequate police resources, whatever. And if you're focused in those things, you're not worried about, you know, downtown Walmart. So, you know, is it something that people can actually learn like as adults or do they have to be like us? I feel like you came from a politically, aware family my dad was a history and government major and they were on school boards and it was a part of my life i used to like literally hide behind the sofa and listen to um meetings after the school board meetings i was i'm a complete political geek i love it right yeah me too but let me let me say this um local politics is not a partisan issue i mean it says right there on the ballot non-partisan election so the beauty of that is when you actually do run for office locally you don't have to deal with that type of thing very often you know it you shouldn't anyway you shouldn't have to but i mean 
the, the Green Bay City Council is never going to legislate abortion. Thank God. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of like to see that debate, though. Wouldn't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I see it somewhat anyway um, on Facebook, but that's not, you know, so if right. you're a person that is, okay, let's say you're a person that's afraid to run for, you know, a district, whether city or county. Don't point at me like that. Know that you're not probably going to get that question often. And if you do, you can just simply respond with, well, you know, this is a nonpartisan election. Right. We don't deal with this type of um, policy. So it's not something that, you know, I respect your views, but this right. is not something that, you know, you know, what else could I do for you? So um, um, I think I know what you're going to answer with this. Um, but uh, so do you think that that was the place of city council to decide about the Walmart thing? Absolutely, because it's a land use issue. Um, That's what they're there for. They're supposed to decide on zoning, um, tax base, assessed value. And that was really, you know, what it was about. I mean, they didn't bring a lot of assessed value. They didn't bring very good tax base. When you compare it to, you know, an entire block of Broadway, they really didn't. So that's what we wanted them to look at. That's what we spent a lot of time talking to them about giving them information Mm -hmm. um and you know they do make some decisions not everyone's happy with the results but they really are supposed to you know should this development go here does it jive with the rest of the area is this you know worthwhile do we have to hand out a lot of tiff money for this if we do are we going to get it back i mean these are things that you know, this is what they're supposed to do. Nice. Okay. I was nodding my head for most of that, too. Yeah. So, um, um, in a similar vein, uh, what do you think that um, people that are not the mayor on city council, what can they do to um, develop that area to make, you know, to make that the kind of kick ass vision that everybody wants you know not a giant parking lot that in 10 years will look mm-hmm. like a giant mistake so we're we're talking specifically larson green or, or whatever i okay. mean i mean you don't have to take it there but like yeah. that's a very visual thing right right, yeah. right um well there are neighborhood associations for a reason so these people are actually active politically active maybe not but just active people in the neighborhood who actually are they care about what happens in their neighborhood whether it be safety or development or what what have you but that's why they're there. And I think that they, you know, they hold events. They hopefully get feedback from residents. Um, you know, you do have needs to meet, to meet in your areas, in your neighborhoods. Um, I would like to see neighborhood associations be more active, maybe at a council meeting where you actually come and you, you know, have some sort of a you know, collaboration of, you know, we'd really love to see this in our district, you know, to work with their aldermen, talk about what they could actually have over there versus just throwing, not to say that they all do this, but, you know, wine tastings and talking about garage sales. Let's talk about what can we ha- have here? What could we, you know, let's do some research. I, d- I don't know. I just see, th- I see neighborhood associations. I like to see them actually be more politically active. Absolutely. No, I would I was, like to see that happen. Yeah. So I was in our neighborhood association for, I don't know, for a year and uh, I got very frustrated for that very reason. Cause I'm like, so the number one thing we're talking about is a garage sale. Yeah, I know. Oh boy. Yeah. I got a little frustrated with that. Um, yeah. Um, so, uh, what do you think that, um, and we don't, if you get bored with any of this, just say I'm bored and let's talk about something else. But, I like to um, talk about green, but I never get bored. Yeah. Okay. So what do you think in regards to either the South side or the North side of like Broadway, mm-hmm. or we can talk about something else, but, uh, um, what do you think that, um, the on Broadway organization should be doing that we're not? You know, let's say that there's me, that you're talking to me, and I'm president, but, you know, maybe there's going to be a a new president, and you want to give a message to that person. What what would you tell he or she? Well, I will say, um, if I just had to look in the last year, I love what's happened. I love the, you know, the wine tastings during the holidays. That was great. I think it brought a lot of people to the district um, that had never been there before. And I thought it was really successful, and um, I volunteered for that. And so yeah. I saw the people coming in, and I thought it was a really great idea. Um, I'm about action. So thank you for volunteering, by the way. Oh, I do it when I can, obviously. Um, I love the benches and the um, the wastebaskets. That was, I'm sorry, genius. 
that was really that's been my favorite it has been it yeah. really has been um here we have a situation yeah did i tell you how that happened is that yeah, what you're saying that i do oh. know i do okay. know how it happened and i think it's like <laughs> well it's a classic example when you have something that isn't going right. necessarily the way that you think it should and then you know you have to problem solve right. but not only do you problem solve right. you come up with a solution that was better than the initial thought right Absolutely. So then that's exactly and you involve the community. I mean, it was like a win, 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 win. So it was great. And um, I probably people get sick of me giving that props, but that's my favorite thing I've seen all Uh, year. That's my favorite thing. That's my favorite thing that on Broadway's probably ever done, really, because it's long lasting. Right. And it's an example of, you know, bringing people in that wouldn't maybe have been involved before and turning like lemons into lemonade, like all of those things. You're checking all the boxes. And it's street art. And I... You know, absolutely. I love street art. Yeah, love it. Yeah. It's one of the best things you can do. You know, for, I did to one. Beautify right? an area. Yes, I do. Oh, know you do. That. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's the worst one for the record, Nick. Just so you know. <laughs> that was just the shoulder shrug. I didn't even get a rude comment on that. Well, yeah. it shows that hey, these people care about their area, and they've put a lot of energy. I did and the green into it. Yeah, I did the green and yellow one. Yeah, I know. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> somebody had to. <gasps> yeah. So I took the bullet. <laughs> well, that's all right. I knew you wouldn't like that. No, it's fine. That's why. See, it's totally it's fine. not fine. It's totally not fine. That's what she's saying with her no, eyes. No, it's, <laughs> it's fine. I'm, I'm, I like it all. No, it was good. And Max did one. Did you know that? No. Oh. Yeah, Max did one. Which one? Uh, he did, um, he, it was like white and blue, so sort of like clouds. And then there's like mm-hmm. blood, like yeah. just red splattered for no reason. No, I. It, it's pretty cool looking. It is. It, yeah. It says, it, it's like so reaches to so many different great things about the, right. uh, what it can do down there. And so. then uh, Gina and our daughter-in-law did the purple cat. Did you see that one? I'm That's right sure in the corner of uh, Broadway and Walnut. Okay. Yeah, like uh, like on the opposite side of the street from like Red. Yeah, and uh, super cool because that was our granddaughter's like little toy. You know, it's sort of like the color of your hat. I know nobody else can see that, but. Right. Yeah, sort of purple and yeah, cat-like. So anyway, thanks for that. Yeah, but, uh, but what else do I think yeah. they should be doing? Yes. Um, whatever you are, whoever you are, if you're you know for profit, nonprofit, whatever you know your organization stands for, I'm a huge fan of action. So you need to be doing things at all times, um, not just talking about it, not just having meetings to hear each other speak. You need to be you know, a force of action because that's how communities get better. And whatever that means to you, you have to discuss that and make a plan. Um, I'm, I'd like to see a little more action happening. So, all right, I'm going to be devil's advocate just because you know that I'm like-minded on that, right? Uh, I prefer action over inaction because even if you make a mistake, well, you move fast, you can fix the mistakes, mm-hmm. right? Um, there would be some people that would say that um, forcing action would be confrontational. What would you say about that? Anything? Forcing action. Well, whatever. Um, wanting to move quickly. Some people may or may not have said that about me. That I'm that, that, that to the point of confrontational. So, so that's a little bit of a. It's just interesting that you brought that up because uh, um, I like action, and I want um, if if I see that there's something like especially easy decisions, right? But even the difficult ones, um, try to navigate it with the best information that I have at the time. And then like, let's just do this. So, you know, the benches was a good example. Yeah. Um, even with Walmart, you know, being on the board, I had a fiduciary responsibility for the decisions that I put out there, right? Um, so I'm like, well, that's easy. Like, it's my job, I have to do that, right? Um, and quietly behind closed doors, I can say whatever, you know, other things, but like, publicly right so um i don't know okay we can move on from that no I didn't, get, I didn't get to respond to that and i'd like to okay go ahead um i think that whatever you're talking about yeah okay forcing action yeah are we afraid that something bad will happen well what's the temperature of your community are you seeing a lot of reaction that's not favorable are you getting negative reaction are you having any sort of you know whether it be conversation in the community on facebook twitter are you seeing you know is the is the news media picked up on something is there that is what you know matters interpersonal situations that's just it is what that's just 
their own thing. But yeah. if you're if you're the purpose of your organization is what is the temperature of the community? Do you see a, you know a positive response? Is there something happening that's positive? Are you seeing negative effects of anything because of you know action, forcing action, however you want to say that? But if you're not seeing anything one way or the other, then you then do, you're not you, doing enough. Then you're not doing enough. Yeah. So I'm not an idle person in any means, and I think that. That's just being idle is just as bad as just, you know, forcing action. Right. So. Right. Absolutely. Okay. That's a lot of action. So if you're uh, uh, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I, I live by that. Yeah. Um, okay. A couple more things. We're almost done. Nick is already bored. He's oh. he's my he's my barometer of if things are going boring or not. <laughs> And you know what? He's on the edge of his seat when Rhonda's talking, and then he hears mm. me, and he's like, "Oh God!" <laughs> so uh, shifting gears a little bit, but uh, um, so I know that you've been you've volunteered a few times for on Broadway, but what other organizations and what other things have you kind of volunteered for around the community? Um, on a regular basis, I volunteer for the Bay Area Humane Society. Um, it was something I used to do years ago, and then. I had a child, um, started my own business, and um, was very involved in that. But then once she turned eight, she was actually able to volunteer. So that was a birthday gift from me was, hey, we're going to go volunteer together. And so that's what we do um, quite often. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, a lot of times I come home and I feel like I'm stapled to the floor from what I see. But there's a need for it. Um, they do great things. Um, I do that quite often. I That's probably something that I would say I would like to see more people involved in, especially knowing the amount of volunteers, volunteerism it takes to, you know, get them moving into the direction they need to go. So what kind of things do they have a need for over there? Well, I mean, really simple things like do laundry, you know, we, poop checks is what they call it. We clean up the cages. So when people come to view the animals, they're not looking at a you know dog or cat that's you know right. not clean. Okay. Um, that sort of thing. But that's it's really important. And yeah, I, I volunteer a lot. I spend a lot of time in the council room. I call that my volunteer work because I don't get paid to do that, but I'm there all the time. Okay. Just kind of keeping an eye on what's going on in the city. Um, so that was sort of the B part of that question. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I said like, what organizations are, have you been involved in? Maybe there's some other things, but, uh, I think you talked about your two favorites. Are there, is there any, are there any other ones or you want to elaborate on your favorites? Well, I mean, of course I try to help out at school as much as I can. Um, which school? Give your school plug. Aldo Leopold, <laughs> Green Bay Public school. school. My it's niece went there for a while. It's wonderful. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's a great school. I'm very happy to be there and honored to be there okay um oh this is a hilarious question i'm not asking this to you but this is a question that uh i had asked gina uh it says this morning max said why would anyone want to hear about her meaning gina she's just a person <laughs> it was the weirdest thing i think you regret saying that now uh okay so why not uh, well right she actually she's just very interesting right but, yeah and you'll see I think it's a pretty good one. Um, I don't know. Nick was there. Was it pretty interesting? Yeah, I think it's worth putting out there. Yeah, good. Maybe make it a bonus track if you, you're. You're if also. You're unsure. Are you afraid of her? You're afraid. No. <laughs> I. She doesn't spark fear in you. Not really. No. Do I? Not really. Oh. Disturbance, maybe. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. Uh, so this is a, this is. A, I think this is a good question. I don't know. I'll let you be the judge. What scares most people that you kind of take in stride or that you handle fine? Hmm. Wow. Yeah. I thought that was a really good question. Uh, Cause people always ask like what, what scares you, right? Probably, um, saying what you feel and putting yourself out there. So you're not afraid to kind of put yourself out there and have somebody like, I put myself out there many times and it didn't go well. Um, and I put myself out there many times and it went great. So I'm really focused on what can happen versus, you know, in a positive way then. Yeah. I don't have a lot of fear of that. So you're not, uh, so you're not afraid of like personal attacks or I've had a million of them. Sure. Oh yeah. I've had all kinds of fun things happen to me. No, because it's really not about me. It's about them. Yeah. Okay. 
It's a good answer. Thank you. I'm going to, I'm going to steal parts of that. Okay. Um, okay. I want to keep it to like under an hour. So, um, we're creeping up on that. Mm -hmm. So what are you most looking forward to over the next 20 years? Any subject, anything you want, whatever. And I just want to be alive. I'm a cancer survivor just this last year. Um, really scary time in my life. I'm looking forward to just trying to be healthy. Yeah. Um, and be able to be in my daughter's life and um, maybe serve my city somehow and use the the fact that I don't have fear of failure really, um, which I guess some people will think is not necessarily a good thing, but I look forward to just seeing what can happen with all of that. Um, so you're all clear? You're cancer free? Yeah, at this point, oh, that's I, awesome. yeah, it is. Um, yeah. That was not fun. Okay. So in 20 years, we have to do this again. <laughs> Hopefully sooner. Um, and, you know, there were probably some other things in here that we talked about, but uh, what's something that you think anybody that might be listening, which is like, you know, my mom and <laughs> whatever, a couple people. Right? Oh, come on. Um, what is something that everyone would be surprised to learn about you? You know, so there's like the public Rhonda and everybody mm-hmm. has like a perception of you mm-hmm. like what would be something somebody would be surprised about if anything hmm. um i i'm actually a pretty sensitive person and i'm pretty simple um i've had people think that i'm high maintenance i'm really not actually i live a very simple life and i don't require a lot to be happy i really don't um you know everybody always wants to focus on you know the the things that aren't going well, I always say, well, there's for, for everything that's not going well, there's like five other things that are going well. Right. And I'm so lucky. And um, I'm not an overtly religious person, but I'm pretty spiritual. And I think that that's, I don't know. I think there's a perception that I'm kind of a hard ass and that I'm, I've been told I'm mean. And I'm actually really not at all. Um, I'm just... You're passionate. I'm passionate. Um, I don't, you know, I don't even like that word because I feel like that word is something that's attributed to women, you know, because I feel like there might be crying and spitting involved in that word, but. um, I've been called passionate (laughs) recently. Passionate. (laughs) Passionate that, no, I think I'm just, I just don't like to waste time. Those are all things that, yeah, I would say the same things. Yeah. Um, because we never know how much time we have. I mean, that sounds really dramatic, but uh, right. we don't. So why don't we just take care of it right now? Absolutely. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, I'm stealing like all of that. Are you? Yeah. Are you writing it down? No, but I have a recording. <laughs> yeah, I am. Re- I am recording this time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yay. Um. Uh, so I don't think I had officially ten questions or anything, and I, that's kind of a guideline anyway. We're kind of loose, but um. Uh, I thought this was a good question that I asked Gina, and I'll tell you what, what she said. But uh, if you could co-host an episode with me in the future, mm-hmm. which guests would you like to talk to? Is that guests or guest? Your choice. Wow. So if you come up with three right away, that's And it has cool. to be someone that will actually show up and... We're not uh, talking dream guests. Well, We're talking... You know what? It could be a little bit of a reach, but it should be somebody that if you and I tag team, then we could get so if Joe Biden's available, nah, <laughs> I wouldn't want to talk to him either. No, can we? Because all I would say is big fucking deal, huh? <laughs> right. <laughs> can we stay local? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gina's was local. Can you tell me who she said? Oh yeah, she said uh, she would love to have Donna Schmidt on. Oh yeah. She, I know. I good love, answer, right? Yeah, I know. She's a great woman. Yeah. She's. I never not see her smiling. She doesn't have RBF. No. She doesn't. Uh, you like stole that before I could even get it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, she never does. She's always smiling. I love her. And uh, I believe that she and Gina share a birthday. Oh. It's nice. just Saturday. Okay. Well, you should yeah. absolutely make that happen. Okay. Oh. So you got to come up with one. Yeah. You don't have to. It's your show. But no, I want to. <laughs> I'm not going to not answer questions. Um, hmm. I would say probably it has to be somebody that people 
problem, though. Not really. Because, you know, uh, to me, not to talk over you, yeah. but uh, to me, that's part of this. Like, yeah. I know a lot of super interesting people that everybody doesn't know. Like, a lot of people know you. A lot of people know Gina. A lot of people know Gary. You know, a lot of people know a lot of the people that I have kind of on my list. But um, a lot of them are a little more private. So I think that that's okay, too. Mm-hmm. There are a lot of interesting people. That, oh, for sure there yeah. are. Oh, wow. That's a hard question. Um, are you going to contact this person? Um, well, I mean, this will be out there. So yeah, hopefully right. they hear through the grapevine. <laughs> that would be the best. You've been summoned. Right. Um, hmm. And I mean, you, they'll have like two awesome uh, you co-hosts. Know, I want to say, um, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not always sure how people are received, but I have... And I don't always agree with, I probably don't agree with more than half of what he says or does, but I'm a Dave Boyce fan. Oh, cool. I am. Okay. He's always been so nice to me when he probably shouldn't have been at times. Um, and I'll never forget the time I saw him actually outside of City Hall. Oh, yeah? Um, on a winter night at like 11 o'clock at night, shoveling snow. And he wasn't even an alderman anymore. Like... I'll never forget that. Yeah. That's, that's like yeah. shoveling snow for somebody else. You mean shoveling snow on the sidewalk of oh. city hall at oh. 11 o'clock at night. Oh, right. Oh, and he wasn't even wow. an alderman of the district at the time. He'd actually lost his election the year wow. prior. Mm-hmm. Wow. That is a great story. Yeah. We wow. walked outside and he's shoveling snow and it actually, um, I'll never, I'll never forget that. No, I'll never forget it now either. That's crazy. I had no idea. And it was one of those really nice, beautiful, soft, you know, snow globe, snow nights. And here he is out there shoveling snow and, you know, I don't know. Yeah. So not just a photo op. No one was there. It was right. 11 That's o'clock at I mean. night. The media right. had actually left. Nobody right. was there. So right. it was, um, it was really That's amazing. amazing to see. Yeah. That's super cool. So I would say Dave Boyce because I think he's, he's an interesting guy. Yeah. He doodles. He will doodle at council meetings. Um, wow. I will sometimes put myself next to him on purpose just to see what he's doodling. Crazy. And, yeah. Wow. I don't know. So that'd be a great one. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. We're almost done. Um, okay. So, um, I don't know. You, why don't you ask a question or tell me something that I should have asked? Something you should have asked. What's your greatest fear? Oh, you're asking me what my greatest fear is? Yeah. Uh, you know? Because so, we, all, we all have them, but... So, um, so over the last year, um, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs and weird stuff. Um, so, I don't know anymore. I kind of don't know. I'm, I feel like it's a little cliche to say I'm not afraid of anything, because that's probably not true. But, like, I would jump out of an airplane in a heartbeat. I would... You know, take the toughest roller coaster. I would uh, get up and talk to whoever. Um, you know, so like the typical things people are afraid of. I don't care. I'm not afraid of those things. Um, I guess I'm sort of afraid of um, betrayal. Uh, uh, you know, like people that you think that you know, or people that you think that you work with or trust, or you know, you think you know really well, and then like. You find out that they kind of maybe don't like you. I guess. What are I'm a you afraid, afraid of, of that. about that? Though? Like, what do you, what do you think is going to happen to you because um, of that? Well, because it kind of calls into question, like, um, like who I am. You know, like you are who your friends are, and if you're all of a sudden realizing, oh, I have different friends than I thought I did, or I have uh, fewer friends than I thought I did. That's a. I, I don't know that I'm afraid of that, but um, that's something that I've never. Not never, I guess, but, you know, it's been a long time since I've had to face something like that, I guess. That's a really good question for me because I don't have a good answer. Somehow uh, I knew that. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm not afraid of anything else. Like all the things you said, right? Like the things that typical people are afraid of. I feel like um, people like us kind of take in stride. So, um, and, uh, you know, part of that is being through tough things, you know, Um I haven't been through cancer, but, um, you know, I've been through other things that were tough for me, I guess. Nothing really compares to that. I, uh, I'm not going to pretend like it does, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm f- pretty fearless, I think, right now. 
Um, I'm, uh, I think people are afraid of putting themselves out there and I'm, I've never been afraid of that. Like I kind of grew up with the internet, right? So like I'm about as public as they come. Like I feel like I've lived my entire life in public, at least my entire adult life in public, right? So yeah, that's interesting. See, you'd be a kick-ass co-host. We are looking for a new host, by the way. <laughs> I'll do it. Nice. How taking applications. Oh, oh, so so she comes in and she's like, <laughs> I can hook you up with all sorts of clients. And he's like, boom, <laughs> I'm out. Yeah, well, so, you know. so you got that other track ready? Sure. Uh, so the other uh, the other track that we don't know the name of. I think I know the names. Okay. I, I well, believe What's the, name? the one we heard before, I believe, was Tormented Pleasure. Okay. Are, are we recording you saying this? Yes. Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, we are. Okay. So the first one was Tormented Pleasure. And this one, I believe, is <laughs> Demon's Cage. Demon's Cage. Also somewhat Whoa. fitting. <laughs> Here it comes. That's from Reburial. Reburial. Nice. You're cut. Nobody, Earth is a demon war. Big clear. 